Amen. We thank God for our children. Uh, if you have not already, why don't you put your hands together so that the kids who are on can see you clap for them. Uh, it is a beautiful thing to have our children in worship on today. We praise God for each and every one of you for being fully engaged with, with your God and with your church family. Y'all, I am happy. I didn't get to see everybody when we dropped off bags yesterday, but we got to see a few and get some big hugs and some of us were mad, some of us were not. We didn't care yesterday. It was just a joy to see the joy on our kids' faces. We were dropping off things. Uh, we hope we didn't uh, the, and they, and, uh, put too much sugar in there. We tried to keep it light, tried to give you something a little bit for them to snack on today um, so that they would be ready and prepared today. So for every <clears throat> parent, grandparent, auntie, uncle, sister, and brother that continues to pour into the lives of our young people, to bring them closer to understanding their why, their purpose, even when sometimes we as their adults have not figured it out, we celebrate and thank you. To our pastor who has given us space to celebrate our children, uh, we give God thanks for you and for your ministry. Always give honor to God for the ways that God draws us continually together. To our children, to our youth, to our teens, we praise God for you that even when it seems rocky, y'all show up time after time and we give God thanks. Y'all, I got a couple of shouts to my pops, to my daddy who has joined us live. That thing is making my heart glad and I'm trying to stay on task and not lose my whole mind. Uh, the other <laughs> shout is always, of course, to my mama, our Christian Education Director of St. Matthew AME Zion Church for Lord only knows the umpteenth time in the life of this beloved community. In her last act, y'all, uh, this time around, and on said assignment, today, mama, I honor you and I thank God for your presence uh, in the life, in my life and in the life of this church. And um, not only for your presence, but the actions that you took, that you take, and I'm convinced you will forever take to ensure that children everywhere understand the importance of reading for knowledge and wisdom, for writing, for clear articulation of what we all know and believe, for varied experiences, for traveling, and for most of all, understanding the importance of being educated on the ways of Jesus Christ. God be praised for the great things that God has done through you and will continue to do. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. Amen. I want to take a minute, um, if you will, um, it's kind of hard sometimes to not be unmuted, but if you can stay muted so that the folks who are watching us via Facebook uh, don't see 18 people, that they uh, just see the screen and me, not because I want to be seen, but it's just easier when you're watching it on that way. So to our Facebook family, we welcome you. We thank you for being a part. Uh, just in case one of my nephews uh, jumps on, Michael Huff, happy birthday, buddy. Love you to death. We'll shoot you off to New York uh, here shortly. And I'm excited, excited, excited that God is doing great things in the life of another young man who lives in Atlanta. Thank you, Javion, for reading the scripture on this morning. It is taken from Ephesians chapter two. It is one short verse. He read it so eloquently from the New Living, Testament, New Living Translation. Let me slow myself down. And it is simply this, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. I'll read it again for those who might have missed it. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. Pray with me. Gracious God, we give you thanks. We give you praise for the many ways that you've already blessed us. For being in our midst, God, as we celebrate our children, youth, and teens, we thank you, oh God, that you loved us enough, loved them enough, and loved us collectively to draw us on one accord on this day. Be with us now as we receive the word that you have for us, that we might be able to do the things that you've called us and created us to do. This is our prayer collectively in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all, today is simple. I'm trying to make it as simple as possible. I want to share with you two big things young people if you're listening you're paying attention i don't care if you're on mute or if somebody can if somebody can hear you even if it's your little brother or sister turn to that person and say two big things thank you two big things here's the first one the first thing you're going to take out of today is this i am god's masterpiece right say it with me i am god's masterpiece right remember to stay muted folks 
I am God's masterpiece. That's the first thing. The second thing I want you to know is I am created to build. Say that with me. I am created to build. Everybody got that part? Two things. If you check out the rest of this, this service, I want you to remember those two things. I am, or you are God's masterpiece, and you are created to build. How do we know this? It's simple. Y'all, it's in the verse that J.B. on read. It says, we are God's masterpiece. Sometimes in, in America, in the English language, well, kind of wherever, masterpiece is reserved for the very best of something. Maybe an artist's painting or even a chef's meal. It might be, young people, if you build, use Legos like I did when I was a kid and you built a big Lego piece, your parents would say, oh, my God, that is a masterpiece. But here's the beauty of us as human beings. We are God's masterpiece. That means that when God created you, God created the very best you that God could create. Artistic masterpieces are often hung in museums and are, they're worth lots and lots of money, y'all. Think about that. Do you think that God created you to put you on a shelf? Do you think that God created you to hide you behind the doors of self-doubt and worry and anxiety and all that? No, y'all, God created you, me, you, the adults, or the children, the youth, and the teens to be seen by all the world as a masterpiece. That means we worth a whole lot in the eyes of God, that we have worth because we are created by the master, so we are masterpieces. Now, here's the deal. Sometimes masterpieces, they lose their value when they become marred or damaged, right? Like there's this big painting, uh, or if a building becomes uh, 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 damaged, then it often loses its value, and people no longer want to pay top dollar for damaged masterpieces. It's like this. If you go into the store, and you want to buy new tennis shoes, and somebody has taken a black magic marker and drew a line on the toe of the shoe. You wouldn't want to pay full price for a marred and damaged shoe. Honestly, you probably would walk out the store and be like, dude, if you can't give me a new shoe, then I ain't buying nothing. I'm not paying for it. But listen to this. Even when we, as God's masterpiece, are marred by our sin, when we do stuff to people, kids, when we say stuff we ain't supposed to, when we do stuff we ain't supposed to, and we don't follow what our mom and dad is telling us to do, even when we do wrong, God still sees us as worthy of all that God has. We still get to live as God's masterpiece. How do I know? Check out what the next line in the text says. It says, God created us new in Christ Jesus. So even when I mess up big, God, you still think I'm valuable? Absolutely. Now, for the kids, this might be way, way over the head. All you got to know is I am God's masterpiece. You don't get none of that. I'm special. I'm worth everything that God has, so much so that God gave God's son, Jesus Christ, to die for me to, so that I could live. Oh my, oh, my goodness. So that I could live. And so we have to understand that even when we mess up, God still loves us and God still considers us worthy. And so unlike artistic masterpieces, unlike big paintings, unlike buildings that fall down, even when we mess up, we do not lose our value because we are created by the master. Somebody turn to whoever's in the room with you or just look up to heaven and say, I am God's masterpiece. I am God's masterpiece. You will always hold your worth in the sight of God. Parents, I need to talk to you right now. That means you can't go around telling your children that they ain't worth nothing because of who their mama might be or who their daddy might be or how, what family line that they have. They are God's creation. Long before they were a twinkle in you and whoever's mine, they were a twinkle and a star and a masterpiece in God's eye. I don't care what y'all try to tell kids or what the world tries to tell our babies. They are wonderfully, wonderfully, beautifully made in the image of God. And parents, that's the way that we have to raise them. We have to raise them in the image of God. They can't be little me's and many me's. They have to be who God has created them to be. God, children, youth, teens, will always be proud to hang you in God's museum. 
He said, I ain't supposed to be hanging in no museum. I'm supposed to be outside, playing outside and doing all this fun stuff. Caden is probably saying, I'm supposed to be riding my bike and doing all this fun stuff. Well, the museum, y'all, God's museum is the world. God's museum is the world. And you say, well, museums are for old stuff. What's the big deal about being hung on a wall or hung in the world? Because museums usually house old stuff, right? And oftentimes the stuff in the museums, they don't move. But there are some museums, like the Children's Museum in St. Louis. We should take a trip, y'all. Y'all should ask moms and dads, let's, let's get on a bus and go to the Children's Museum in St. Louis. Or the Space Museum in Washington, D.C. And although these things are very valuable, there are things that move. They have things that you can touch. You can not only read about stuff and look at stuff, but you can play with stuff. You can push buttons and knobs. And you can see these masterpieces in action. Well, children, you, teens, adults, we all are living, moving, and breathing museum, or breathing museum of God. We don't hang on the walls of the church for people to come see us. No, no. We are called to go into all the world and display to everybody that we are God's masterpieces. People ought to be able to not only see us, but they should hear us because we're not mannequins. They should be able to watch us. They should be able to hold our hands like arm in arm and, and protest and sing and, and get together and love on each other. We are God's holy creation called to do good things in the world. That's what the rest of the text says is that we are God's masterpiece created to do good things in the world that were established long before we would have twinkled in mom and dad's eye. We are called to move within God's museum. We are called to move within this world on full display of the great thing that God has done in our lives and to help more people recognize that they are God's masterpiece too. What a world it would be if we all saw ourselves as special. What a world it would be if we all acknowledge that we are all God's masterpieces called to build a world very different from, from what we see today. We are called to build. We were created to build a world filled with more kindness and more justice. And as one of the elders said, it's not just about worshiping God, but it's about following the ways of God. I can sing, dance, praise, and fall out all day long. But if I don't get up from the floor after I have fallen out and go do what God says do, what was the point of my worship? So we have to worship and follow because we are God's masterpieces. We're created to help God continue to build the museum where everybody is welcome. Say it with me. I am created to build. Oh, shoot. I didn't see your mouth moving. Y'all wasn't playing with me. Say it one more time. Wait one more time. Yeah. See, y'all think I ain't looking at y'all. I'm looking at everybody. If you got your face on, I'm watching you and it's set. I am created to build. Go on and say it. I know it feels weird, adults. You can say it too. Because sometimes we forget that we're called to build the kingdom of God. And we're, our children, they don't have to wait till they 15, 18, 22, and 25. They can start right now, amen, Thurman children, helping us build or helping God build the kingdom of God. I'm almost done. Y'all told y'all I wasn't going to be before y'all long. In order to be, we don't have to do anything to be God's master. Piece, right? We don't. God created us. That's the masterpiece. However, to build this kingdom, to build this world, to build this museum of God, we have to have some proper tools and we got to put on some proper attire. This morning, I wanted to get up because it came to my mind. I'm like, oh, kids like stuff. I should have went to Lowe's. And so I was going to take my walk and go to Lowe's and I was going to buy a yellow hard hat and I was going to put on a vest and I was going to have some tools. Kate, okay, you know, you talking to me? I think you're talking to me. Uh, and then I decided, no, let me just focus. Let me stay clear. Uh, so I did take a walk this morning. I just didn't get all the way to Lowe's. But I thought about we ought to have the proper tools and the proper attire to be able to help God build this kingdom because we are created to build. So you don't go to a construction site without a hard hat or a safety net or goggles. You, they wouldn't even let you in. Likewise, we can't help God build without the proper tools and the proper attire. Quick things, I'm out of your way. The tools that you need 
to help build, because you were created to build, the things that you need, the tools that you need to help God build a business. The first thing is prayer. Every morning, every night, throughout the day, you've got to look to God, seek God and say, God, what would you have me to do today? Tool, prayer is your first tool. The second tool is your Bible. Your Bible, you got to read it, study it, meditate on it, and then do what it says do. So your top two tools in your toolbox to be a builder for God is prayer and Bible. Y'all got it? Say it with me. Uh, 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 adults looking at me side at y'all, y'all, y'all don't agree with me? Your first two tools are to pray and to read, study, and meditate on your Bible. Young people, I see you nod, and even if the adults won't help me along. So then the next tool is, here's what, here's, here's this big thing. There's a whole bunch, and we're going to try to teach this somehow uh, along the way over the next year, is the fruit of the Spirit, right? One, some of our tools come from being made in the image of God and living by the Spirit. That means we got to be more loving, even to them little annoying brothers and sisters. We got to have some joy. We can't always walk around mad at everything and everybody. We got to have some peace in our mind and in our heart because when you don't have peace, children, when your little sister, or your little brother do something to you, you'll be like, oh, leave me alone. Stop it. Right? So we got to find some peace and some patience. I'm, I'm probably talking to everybody right here. Right? How do you have patience with the people that you say you love? When they do the things that irritate you and bother you and get on your nerves, God is saying when you have the spirit, you can have a little more patience. It can extend beyond. You don't have to snap at everything they say and or do. You can absolutely have patience. And it's also kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness. Y'all, everything ain't got to be hard. Everything ain't got to be rough. Show a little tenderness. Some of, come on, is that Sam Cook? Come on, elders, is that Sam Cook? Show a little, oh, I don't know if that's the word or not, but y'all know what I'm talking about. We got to show a little tenderness to the people that we say we love, and we got to have some self-control. The thing that I don't like to hear the most from children is, well, I'm just a kid. But you're a kid. You're a kid created by God who now has the spirit of God, which means you can do all kinds of good things in the world. So those are your tools, prayer. Bible study, read Bible, get your Bible, and then live by the fruit of the Spirit. And then, and thank you, uh, Reverend Skinner, because Re Reverend Skinner put us on this last week. You got to get dressed right, right? We go outside every morning. I put my T-shirt on. I put my tennis shoes on when I go run. I remember when my daddy used to lay carpet, he, would put, he wouldn't put on his best suit. He would put on his jeans, an old T-shirt, his tennis shoes, and he'd have special stuff like his toolbox and some knee pads so he wouldn't mess up his knees. For us as Christians, we got to have on the right attire. We got to have on the belt of truth. That means we always got to say something to speak the truth, y'all. God don't like that lying stuff. So we got we to gotta work on that, that belt of truth. Then you got to have some righteousness, the breastplate of righteousness. That's the armor of God to protect your heart from the foolishness of the world. You got to walk in peace. We already talked about that. You got to have a shield of faith. You got to believe that God is on your side. So when the enemy and evil comes against you. You can just put up your seal and say, I believe that I am a masterpiece and you can't make me think nothing less. And then you got to cover your, cover your mind of your, with a helmet of salvation and say, oh my God, right? I am saved. I am created by God. I am fearfully and wonderfully made and ain't nothing you can do about it. And then you got to walk with our sword of the spirit and that's our Bible. So in order for us to to walk and to build the way God has created us to build. We got to have the right tools. We got to have the right attire. We got to put on the right clothes because God created each of us special and God created us to do big things. Our vision for the next year is we're building together. And that means every child, every young person, every teenager, and every adult is called together to build. We are God's masterpieces, and we are created to build. God bless you. Go in peace. Amen. Amen. So, Reverend Hancock, are you or Pastor going to do our, okay. Reverend Skinner, are you still on the line?
Here's an invitation. You still there? Yes, ma'am. Okay, you got it. All right, guys. So, as the kid, as you all heard, kids and adults and youth and young adults, as you heard, Reverend Hancock said that we are created to build and we create, we're created to build the kingdom of God. And some people might be like, well, how do I create? How do I know the way in which God wants me to create? And that is allowing and accepting Jesus into your heart. So if you would like to make Jesus your Lord and Savior today, today is your day. And so we're going to pray. I have Trey here with me, but we're going to pray. And if you would like to accept Jesus into your life, you just have to say, Lord, I realize that I am a sinner and I need a savior. And Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God and that God raised you from the dead after three days. And I want you to come into my life and you be Lord over my life. Okay, so that is what being saved is. And so we're going to pray this prayer. So if you, if you want to be saved today, I want you to pray this prayer with me. So close your eyes. Say, Father, I realize I am a sinner and I need a savior. Jesus, I believe that you are that savior I need. Come into my heart, forgive me of all of my sin, and help me to live a life that is pleasing in your sight. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So if you prayed that prayer, guess what? You're saved, and we're celebrating you today. You're saved. Don't let anybody tell you anything different if you're watching us on facebook if you're watching with your family on zoom and if you just prayed that prayer we want you to put that in the comments and to because we want to celebrate with you we want to get you connected because guess what you don't have to figure out life by yourself you have a whole bunch of kids you got a whole bunch of youth you got a whole bunch of young adults you got a whole bunch of adults you got a whole bunch of seniors who are here to help you along the way. And I know Trey is gonna need somebody outside of me and his daddy at some point. <laughs> so we just are wanna celebrate you. We're so excited for you and we just want you to be connected. Stay encouraged. Thank you, thank you, Reverend Rebecca. Um, At this time, we, we, we do the offering. That, where is that Shannon Hancock girl? I am here. <laughs> okay. We the, I, I got it. I will do the offering. Uh, uh, Minister Cynthia Lewis will lead us in our offering. Um, after our offering, we will go with remarks from our pastor. And because um, brother, little Master Caden was unable to be heard with his siblings as they were singing, Pastor, before you bring remarks, if you will allow Caden uh, and the Thurman children to, to sing again so that we do get a chance to hear them before we leave uh, for the day, that would be awesome. Uh, so make their singing part of your remarks. Uh, but before we do that, we want to ask Minister Lewis to lead us in our offering. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning, church. We are now preparing our hearts and our minds for our offering. Uh, we have... At St. Matthew, we have three ways that you can give uh, by give a fly, give a fly. I can't even talk. Give a fly, <laughs> and by uh, which it is an app on your smartphone, or you can visit our website, which is online, or you can mail it to St. Matthew AME Zion Church, 4400 East Linwood Boulevard, Kansas City, Missouri 64128. Give as your heart desire. God bless. Let us have a word of prayer. Most gracious God, we thank you so much for this day. We thank you for the giving hearts and minds, God. We pray that everyone will give according to their mind and their hearts, oh God. May we use it to please you, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we pray and give thanks. Amen. Amen.
Um, at this, at, before we uh, go into remarks uh -oh, from uh, our pastor, Brother uh, Holland wanted to make an announcement. So, Brother Holland, you're on. Okay. Good morning, uh, St. Matthews. Nice. And I want to uh, thank uh, Reverend Hancock for that awesome uh, word. And it kind of leads into uh, a little bit as what I wanted to uplift, uh, which is our Wednesday uh, Bible studies at uh, 530. And uh, uh, prayers at 530 and Bible study is at uh, 6 o'clock. So one of the things that she said was, is that uh, we need the proper tools and attire to build. So uh, prayer and uh, Bible study, I uh, just like to encourage uh, everybody to, if you can make it there at 530, uh, to be a part of the prayer because uh, God knows that uh, uh, we really all uh, need prayer. Uh, the second thing is, is, is that on the next Sunday, <clears throat> We will be uh, observing our pastoral family uh, appreciation uh, service. And uh, our own Reverend Hancock will be bringing us another uh, encouraging and awesome word. And, uh, you know, just really what we want to do is, is that uh, just first of all, just to be a blessing. We want to uh, encourage. And we want to demonstrate our love. So we asking everybody that's uh, that's willing to participate. And if you uh, decide to give uh, via Giveify, uh, be sure to note the amount. And if you just uh, put appreciation, and that way we can uh, make sure that everything is dispersed according to uh, uh, what you have noted. Thank you. Thank you, Brother Billy. Uh, mm -hmm. Pastor? You're on. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Caden and DJ. Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, we thank God for this awesome day and uh, this Children's Day uh, that was amazing. We thank God just for all the children who are here, all the youth, the children, the teens who participated, who did an awesome job. Uh, thank you all for being here. This was, um, even in the midst of our quarantine and in the midst of our isolation, it's still good to highlight yes, our children. Yes, uh, we thank God for this means to be able to do so. 
to be able to highlight our children and to recognize them and to celebrate them and for them to uh, lead us in worship. So uh, thank you all to, to the team who set this all up. Uh, first of all, just to Sister uh, Hancock, uh, uh, Sister Joyce Hancock, thank you for uh, leading this day uh, and your excitement for this day and your organization of this day. Um, we appreciate all the many years that you have uh, been the Christian Education Director. How long have you been, uh, Sister, Sister Hancock, uh, at St. Matthew? Let's see. I, I might be telling my age if I say, but it's, pro it's probably 25 years almost. Amen. Amen. Well, we appreciate your service. Um, can we just give Sister Hancock just an awesome, uh, just some praise, some, some, some thanks. <laughs> we appreciate you and love you uh, and love that you love our children yeah uh, because our children are our future uh, we thank you for because everybody here that everybody doesn't have don't have the gift <laughs> so we thank you <laughs> for enduring uh the process of teaching the children even when they're you know difficult at times we thank you for sticking in there uh and just having the love for, for the children, so thank you. Um, thank you to the entire team. Uh, who's your team, Miss? Um, uh, uh, Chanel Hicks and Pat Crawford, um, yeah. Rhonda Briscoe, when you know she's available to help with support, uh, Reverend Hancock, of course, who tries to keep me on course. Um, you, when you know I have to get approval to do something. But I appreciate, uh, I really do appreciate, I've enjoyed doing what I do. I tell people all the time, I'm really not kid friendly, um, but I still love them. Uh, it's just that um, having only one, um, I, and she was such a precious little person. <laughs> After that, everybody's kid had to be a precious little person. <laughs> and, we, and we all know. Uh, but she had her ups and her downs with her dad. So, you know, that part I didn't have to get into. But I, I really have appreciated. I'm not going anywhere. I'm still here. So uh, i always be available to help in whatever way I, I can. Uh, thank you very much. Amen. And we'll hear more about uh, that, uh, I'm sure, when we come back together. Uh, but just wanted to take this time to highlight you and thank you for your years of service. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, thank you, Reverend Hancock, for the word on today. Uh, I'm sure you had a whole lot to, uh, to do with what happened today. So thank you uh, for your sacrifice and thank you for the bags. You said those were for the children, right? Because <laughs> uh, to stay out of the kids' bags. <laughs> <laughs> I actually saw some fruit snacks that was pretty good. So uh, thank you for those, Reverend. <laughs> And Sister Chanel, thank you for your love for the children and for your support to the ministry. We appreciate you and thank you uh, just as much. Ms. Pat, uh, Ms. Pat Crawford, God bless you and thank you uh, for your service uh, and for your love for the children uh, as well. Um, just wanted to say congratulations to Kenyon, who is a youth of St. Matthew for graduating. Um, hope you got your uh, little gift from St. Matthew. Uh, financial gift, uh, please let us know if uh, you haven't gotten it, but we just want to bless you and congratulate you for finishing and continuing on going to college. We are praying for you. We are praying your success. We're praying that um, you will get everything that God wants you to get, um, that you would be everything that God wants you to be. So uh, lean on us when you need help, when you need support, when you need some money, let us know. We are here for you. Uh, in any way we can. We love you and are wishing uh, the best uh, for you. Um, so that is all I had today. Um, so we're going to uh, turn you back over into the hands of Sister Joyce. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Reverend Hancock, you are going to close us. Okay. Amen. Thank you again, everybody, um, for another space to, to share the word of God, uh, to be used by God, to help build the kingdom of God. 
I know I am a masterpiece. Um, I heard it all my life from my parents, um, but then I had to believe it for myself. And so uh, I pr proudly walk around with my shirt that says, I am enough because I believe in Christ Jesus. I am just that, I am enough. So I wanna recognize quickly um, every single one of our children. I want to call them by name. I believe that to be important. Um, yeah. So I'll read the list. Uh, CJ, Caden, Casey, Kayla, Taylor, McKenzie, Pharaoh, Bryson, Pierce, Malone, Trey, Quasi, Jakara, Serenity, Shia, Javion, Elijah, Sarah, Caden, Jayshon, Tierra, Jalen, Kenyon, Desmond, Anika, and Merville. That is every single child, youth, and teen that we have been allowed to raise up in the ways of Christ. And so we count it a privilege and an honor that you as parents allow us to be a part of their upbringing. With that said, let us now prepare for the benediction. Gracious God, you've created every single one of us with a purpose. You've made us each special. Help us to use our gifts, talents, and abilities for you to commit ourselves to doing all that you have for us to do because we are your masterpieces and we are created to help build the kingdom of God. We can only do this, God, through the power of your spirit. So be with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. The people of God say together, amen. Amen. Love you all. Love you Have all. a great Thank Sunday. you, everybody.